Welcome to Pick Cooking. Today we're going to walk through the pre-install process for a pit cooktop uh, and the steps that I make sure I always take before putting in a pit cooktop. First thing will be the bench top and cabinetry guidelines. This is attached on the side of every pit cooktop box. Um, so certainly we want to make sure that we review these. In particular, what we're going to talk about today, we have the cutouts uh, and the slab or countertop uh, inspection. So as you can see here, we have beautiful smooth cutouts, um, both for the uh, burners and for where the control knobs go through. We're also making sure that the control knob cutouts are only a 25 millimeter hole uh, and nothing larger. The other consideration we always want to make sure we look for as well is where the join uh, is on the countertop. So we don't want to see a join running through the middle of a cooktop or burner or anywhere um, within the cooktop's length. We want to make sure that those joins are at least um, 250 millimeters away from the edge of the nearest cutout. So 250 millimeters in that direction, 250 millimeters in that direction. After we've inspected the top of the counter, next step is to inspect the underside of the countertop. This is for any obstructions, small pieces of glue, um, the, you know, various different adhesives that get used on job sites. So what we want to do, we get down, look up from underneath, make sure that we can't find any um, pieces of glue, anything that's uh, sitting up off the countertop. So after we've inspected the top of the counter, the underside of the counter, we now want to go through the process of checking our cooktop's fitment. The easiest way to do that, and the way that we always do that, is using the heat shield itself. This mimics the size and shape of the cooktop that's going in underneath. So what we're going to do is take the heat shield, put it through underneath our counter. We then want to reach through, grab the heat shield, and once it's in, in position, just ensure that if we move it around, we're not butting into anything, there's no obstructions, we've got a little bit of play, and that we can bring that heat shield firmly up against the countertop all the way through. After completing our pre-install check, the next part of the process is to do our in overview of components. Each burner will have a food grade silicon ring, a collar, heat shield, Trivet, burner, control knob and scale, and three installation screws. Then what we want to do is ensure that we have each burner laid out in the same way, so we can do a visual check that all of our components are ready to go. Step two is to install the food grade silicon ring onto our heat shields. Easiest way to go about this have the heat shield facing away from yourself. Take the silicon ring, pop it onto the top of your heat shield. Once in position, simply slide your finger along gently. We don't want to stretch the, the, the silicon ring and just work its way down until it's completely on. And as you can see, now in place. Flip it upside down onto the counter, give it a small press, and that means the silicon ring has been seated properly. So the third step in the install is going to be identifying where all of your set screws are on the body of your cooktop. As you can see that I'm pointing to here. So the fourth step for installation, we are now going to wind down the set screws to match the top of the body. And as you can see, our other set screws are all in position, ready for the heat conductor to be placed on top of the unit. We want to grab our heat conductor, ensure that the label side is down facing the unit, and simply lower that into position. Now with the assistance of another person, lift the unit up into position by placing your hand down through the cutouts, gently raising it through the hole without touching any of the components off the lower surface and using a clamp to hold in position. Here's another view of placing that Irwin grip down through the counter and gently clamping it so the unit is held in position. So 
during step five, as you saw, we raised the unit into position. Our technique to make this a little bit easier is to use a set of Irwin grips to hold the cooktop in position whilst we insert the heat collars. So step number seven will be to place the heat shields in position. Where we differ slightly from the instructions is that our Owen clamps will currently intrude on the larger burners, but we'll get to that next. So for step number eight, we're now going to screw our seven and 10 megajoule burners into place. They only require two screws. This can be started by hand. And we'll finish tightening the screws with a handheld flathead screwdriver. We really don't want to use any power tools as we may over tighten or damage the product. So now for step number nine, we're going to tackle the 18 megajoule burners. We want to place our hand gently through the counter, taking the weight of the cooktop as we release our Owen clamp. We lower the unit until it rests on the counter with the other burner. Now we take our collet, drop it down into the cutout. The next part of the process, we will take our heat shield. We want to check for the notch and align that with this rib on the burner. This rib here. Like so. To install the screws, we will apply a light pressure under the counter with our fingers on the unit, allowing us to seat the heat shield and begin attaching the screws without any undue pressure on the threads. Again, finger tight at first, and then we'll finish these with the flathead screwdriver. Step number 10, we want to take our scale control knob, place them together. Don't remove the adhesive backing on the scale. In step number 11, we now want to check our alignment. So gentle pressure under the unit and we can walk it until the spindles are centered in the cutouts. Step number 12, with the indicator facing away from your body, we want to place the control knob in position, one hand underneath, and firmly press down. Step 14 through step 17, we want to tighten our screws in the order of front, middle, rear. So as we tighten our screws against the heat conductor, a little tip that I have is to place your hand under the heat conductor, press it firmly against the counter and bring the screw up to meet it. So as soon as we cross the threshold and that control knob dips below the scale, that's when we want to stop tightening. The final part of the process, we want to remove our control knob, take the adhesive backing off the scale, like so. Now we want to align the indicator, holding the scale in position against the control knob, 
push down and gently put the scale into position. Check that the knob turns freely and pops back to its starting position. Apply a final bit of pressure and you're done. Once the control knobs are in position, we just want to place all of our other components on top of the burner. So the burner, the trivet, and something we can check at this moment as well is that our alignment is in, has been performed correctly. We want to see a 45 degree angle with a cross on the trivet. If you see a trivet that's not quite the right position, it means that we need to realign this notch with the ribbon there for the burner. You're on. Now that everything's been installed, this is what we should see in the final part of the process. All of our trivets in place, burners, 45 degree angles, and control knobs without any gaps or excessive pull down.